Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 323, going over Magic Finance for October 2016. Let's jump right in here. We've got a lot of stuff to cover in a short period of time. Number one, cards are starting to go up. Cards from the new set that are playable in Modern and in Standard. Ether Hub. this was my number nine pick on the top 10 list for the set. It is going up. The foils are already at $10. I would pick them up now. They've doubled since the pre-order price that I picked them up at, at five. This is a solid card for Modern. It's a very cool long-term card. It's only an uncommon, but it's gonna see a lot of play in a lot of different types of deck. It's also a great casual card and it looks good in foil. A lot of people have asked me about the effect of the masterpiece cards on the market. Are they a sign that we're going the way of sports cards and that magic has jumped the shark and we should all just get out of magic and only play casual popper decks? Those people are crazy. This is a fundamentally different thing than what Upper Deck and others did to destroy the sports card market. Yeah, they had chase cards. Yes, those chase cards were worth insane amounts of money. I have no idea why they were worth so much. Some of these chase cards were worth as much as buying an actual official jersey. There is no play value to sports cards. Magic cards can be played means that the value is not tied to whether or not there are cool chase cards. It's tied to how many people actually play the game. And as long as the number of people playing the game continues to go up, having a $200 version of a $60 card is not going to show the death of the game. Don't worry about these chase cards. They're actually a positive for the game. They do add value to the packs. They do possibly slightly decrease the cost of standard. I'm still debating that. I might be changing my opinion on that. They add this really cool factor for people who want that special, crazy, amazing stuff. Now, the next question is, when do we buy these crazy cards? We've got 30 to 60 days on the Masterpiece cards. They're dropping, they're almost bottomed out at this point, and once the next set is released and people are buying it en masse, then these will start to rebound. Right now, you've got this huge market inefficiency with these cards. People playing standard who could care less about these eternal, amazing vintage staples are opening them and they want to turn them into cards that they want to play today. So as long as the people that have them aren't really the ones that want them, there's that transactional cost of getting them into the hands of people who want them. And as long as that's going on right now, they're, they are dropping in price. Wait a few more days, then start picking up your favorite masterpieces. MTGO, I love legacy. I love vintage. It is insanely expensive to play in paper in either of those formats because of the evil dreaded reserve list. MTGO though, continue continues to try to add things that look so promising and wonderful to make it more interesting for people to play Magic Online. Recently, they've done treasure chests. I'm not sure exactly where they got this idea. In this particular case, Magic the Gathering Online has done what they seem to do again and again, which is epically fail. This has been a huge disaster for MTG. Oh, I don't know what they were thinking here. The Math to figure out the value of these chests could easily be done with anyone who has a spreadsheet and access to MTG Goldfish. There should be absolutely no reason that you add a new feature and in some cases, the projected prize amount goes down, not up. I'm glad that they're gonna make these things tradable. It sounds like next month, that should have been with the early release. When you add things, it should go up in value, not down in value. These should be really cool. I would even be happy opening less of them if there were better things out of them. Or announce it with some other program. Like at the end of the month, you get a cool special golden chest. Oh wait, maybe somebody else does that. But there's so much potential capital out there, people who want to invest in digital card games online, that I expect to see something really cool first or second quarter of next year to try to improve on the failures that they've had. Let's talk about standard. Smuggler's Copter, oh my God. I thought this was gonna be good. I put it at number four on my top 10 list. I had no idea that it was gonna be as nuts as it is. This card is being played in absolutely everything. Hopefully the next set has an answer. I'm not sure what that is. 
something that kills creatures and artifacts uh two for one this card is so powerful and so easy to activate that it is just dominating standard right now would i hold on to these long term no if you've got extra play sets of them now is the time to liquidate them a rare at the 15 to 20 dollar range is crazy but if you're playing standard you must have a play set pretty much every deck is playing smuggler's copter Maybe they'll put it into a quick event deck or something, but it's very difficult to play standard without this card. In standard, Chandra's already dropping. We're down $15 from release. Part of that's the Smuggler's Copter, which Chase pointed out very accurately over at Star City Games. There are so many decks such as this vehicles deck that are just crushing in the environment. And vehicles are really, really tough for planeswalkers to deal with. Planeswalkers need an answer to vehicles main deck or they're just going to get walked on. I really like the spider. The legendary spider is crazy cool and can block most of the vehicles, including the copter. This is a solid card. It's a little bit slow, but if you've got a way to stabilize the board early and then drop this, copters are not a big deal long term. In standard, there's two cards that I really, really like that are near end of life for standard, which is Ulamog and Kozilex Return. Both of these cards I'm putting on buy, and I know that they'll drop a little bit when they rotate out, but the reason why is we're transitioning into talking about modern here, and they're making a splash in modern. This is a sweet red-green Tron deck that is playing Kozilex Return as a three of. It's playing Ulamog as a two of. It's playing Ugin as a two of. These cards are not only super cool, popular, casual cards, but long-term have a place in modern, and that's what's going to make them a staple for years to come. I hope they free the elf. A lot of people are talking about the elf right now. With Deathrite out of the environment, cascading into Lily is still pretty broken, but I would not be surprised to see the elf back sometime in the next year or so. I wouldn't speculate super heavily, but I would at least make sure that I've got a playset, maybe an extra playset to trade off of the elf, because Blood Braid is super cheap right now at three bucks. Ooh, Noble Hierarch. What the hell's going on here? I guess with Deathrite banned in the environment, where in Legacy everybody's playing Deathrites, Noble Hierarch has really taken over as the go-to mana dork and is incredible in one of the more broken decks, Infect. I hope they do something to nerf Infect. I hate Infect. It is a crazy good deck right now, though. Noble Hierarch is 70 bucks right now. It is very, very likely to see a reprint next summer. It will be back down around $35, and it could be hit really heavily by any banning that hits Infect. Modern's also got some cool cards that are super cheap right now and seeing a pretty good amount of play. Serum Visions, three bucks right now, was an $8 card. It even got shifted up. It could continue to go up. Tassiger, I know I've been saying buy it for a while, but $2, this card is crazy good. And Street Race, they're seeing play in that Crazy Death Shadows deck, which is probably one of the most broken decks in modern. When it works, it's really difficult to stop it. It's not as popular right now as the Infect decks are. I think it's because people can't get a hold of that freaking bobble. It is a crazy good deck. And it's the type of deck where you're using life as a resource. I don't think that it's going to see a banning until it starts to dominate and qualify a bunch of people for the Pro Tour from GPs. In Legacy, we've got cool stuff going on. Recruiter of the Guard is seeing play, not only in Death and Taxes, but in Allurin. This is a top eight deck from SCG that is running Volrath Stronghold as a singleton, wonderful reserve list card, and one of my absolute favorite EDH cards ever. If you don't have it, you better have it because it's going to be a $50 card someday, no problem. But Recruiter of the Guard is down at $15 right now. Four of in this deck. A one to three of in Death and Taxes. Wonderful cube card. Packs are being open for Conspiracy 2 right now. The box prices are super cheap. Pick it up while you can. It's going to be a $30, $40 card long term. It is a wonderful eternal staple for years to come. Legacy is also seeing some really interesting stuff. We saw a nice Maverick deck do pretty well at Star City Games. 
I like Garruk the Relentless a lot when things look fair. And Knight of the Reliquary both has a combo deck and Maverick. And both of these cards could also see life in modern. They're both very reasonably priced. I'm trading for any extras that are out there. I see that a Planeswalker that is flip, not likely to be printed anytime soon, could really spike and be difficult to get a hold of long term. Leovold, ooh, what happened here? Oh, sees a little bit of play in Legacy jumps through the roof. I would hold on to your standard ones at $25 for a set that doesn't seem to be opened a huge amount. That's reasonable, but $120 for foils. That's crazy. I would stay away from the foils altogether. Yes, this is a solid card. Yes, it's a good card for EDA, but $120 foils, eh, not so much for me there. Vintage. We've got the Vintage Super Series which is showing us some really cool decks. And this was Eric's deck from there. I like this Hate Bear deck a lot. Thalia is very, very solid. Containment Priest, very, very reasonable. We have a giant vintage tournament coming up in the next few weeks here. Eternal Weekend, I'm unfortunately not making it this year. I decided to go to Gen Con instead. I hope to make it next year. But Hate Bears looks like a really cool deck. Additionally, I really like this hardcore control deck. Three mind break traps. Anybody who's seen my deck techs, especially back when I was playing Grixis Law, knows that I really like that card in Legacy. It helps you win counter wars. It helps you counter stuff that can't be countered because it exiles it. It is crazy good eat against things like Cavern of Souls or Stopping Abrupt Decays. Mind Break Trap is a very, very underrated card. Also, Flusterstorm, $50, $60 card. The foil is not much higher, and it is a legacy and a vintage staple. I think there's a lot of concern that it's going to see a reprint sometime soon in foil. I think we've got at least a year and a half or two years for another foil print on it. I would at least hold on to it, if not buy it. Old School is definitely affecting the price of some older cards. And some of these are buyouts, and some of these are actually awesome cards. Singing Tree, up 20%. I would not touch that card. That card is bad. That card is a four casting cost wall of wood that occasionally taps. I mean, no, this is a terrible, terrible card. It's pretty. Beautiful artwork by Rob Alexander. Like the look of it. If you need an Arabian Nights set, then hey, you gotta have it. But it is not Guardian Beast. Guardian Beast has been up like... 10, 15% in the last two weeks. This is an amazing card. This is a wonderful effect. This is a great EDH card. This is a solid old school card. This is the type of card that I would definitely trade for and hold on to. By the way, it's forecasting costs, not just one black. They printed stuff really dark back then. Crazy good card for keeping your artifacts around. I like it a lot. For the time period that it came out, it was a powerhouse at the time. I played it in several different decks. That's the type of card that I would hold on to for an old school. Commons. We've got some crazy new commons in the current set. I'm pulling a few of these out of the Professor's top five best popper cards from Kaladesh. I started to do this section myself. I had three of these cards on here and then I ran into his video and I'm like, oh yeah, I agree with all of those too. Check out his video. He's got a few more things there. Cardic Reunion great card in Dredge, great card in Modern, and much better than I thought it was in Standard. Why? Because there's very few counterspells being played right now. If you need stuff in the graveyard, it's gonna get it there, and it gets you to the cards that you need when nobody's playing counterspells. The vehicles, those could be crazy cool in Popper. I look forward to seeing a vehicle Popper deck. And Workshop Assistant, cool possible combo card. Very, very nice there. Maybe even a broken combo card for Popper. Very cool comments overall. To dive deep into the recesses of Magic Finance, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's over there on Patreon supporting the channel. I greatly appreciate it. Until next time, choose the cards wisely.